This week on Charger Bulletin News. The room selection process is daunting for any student, let alone rising sophomores who have never even done it before. But luckily, we start to disseminate this information later today on Charger Bulletin News and get these rising sophomores prepared for housing selection. President Kaplan releases a statement on the Atlanta shooting. Hi everybody, Beth Boji here with Charger Bulletin News. The Tagliatella College of Engineering has a 98% employment rate. So what makes this program so unique? Find out more on Charger Bulletin News. And a chance to nominate your favorite women right here on Charger Bulletin News. Hello and welcome to Charger Bulletin News. I'm Kayla Mutchler. And I'm Alex Severo. It's been a busy week, so let's get to this week's stories. President Kaplan released a statement about the recent shooting that took place in Atlanta. He states, The senseless murders in Atlanta and the increased dehumanizing violent acts aimed at members of the Asian American and Pacific Islanders communities are deplorable and incomprehensible and must stop. As a community, we condemn these actions and all acts of hate, racism, and discrimination and bigotry in the strongest possible terms. We stand with and support our fellow Chargers of Asian and Pacific Islander descent and pledge to do more. He urges the campus community to join the courageous conversations, discussions hosted by the Myatt Center for Diversity and Inclusion and the Dean of Students Office. This discussion focuses on the rise in anti-Asian violence. The meeting will take place on Thursday at noon via Zoom. Check your student email for the link. The University of New Haven will host a virtual ceremony for the 17th annual Holocaust Remembrance event. The Holocaust Remembrance Ceremony is a memorial to the six million Jewish victims of the Holocaust and the millions of other victims of Nazism in Europe. This event acts as an opportunity to reflect on the ethical choices we face today. This year's keynote speaker is Dr. Leon Kamidis of West Hartford, Connecticut, one of many of the Holocaust survivors. The event will be broadcast on April 8th at 3 p.m. via Zoom. Check your student email for the link and passcode. The Tagliatella College of Engineering has been creating new programs and opening career opportunities for students. Beth Bodro has the story. In a ranking from U.S. News and World Report, the university's engineering program is currently considered to be within the top third engineering programs in the country. As recognized by U.S. News & World Report, the engineering program offers many advantages to students. It is only one of 23 universities in the nation to be designated by the National Security Agency as a National Center of Academic Excellence in Cyber Operations. Along with this designation, new programs have been added. As of this semester, students can enroll in a Ph.D. program in Engineering and Applied Science. There is also a new biochemistry degree and game development concentration. The engineering school is not only expanding, but is seeing high success rates. Currently, there is a 98% job placement rate in the program. Much of this success comes from the faculty, campus resources, and internship requirements. Dr. Stephanie Gillespie says that the internship requirement has not only proven to help students get more hands-on experience, but helps them to network and sometimes line up a job for after graduation. In engineering, without an internship, it's very hard to get your first job. So by making sure that we set up the structure and we provide the resources to find those internships, we're better able to help our students when they graduate find their first job as well. The university's engineering program continues to grow and helps students enter their field post-graduation. For Charger Bulletin News, I'm Beth Beaudry. The university remains in yellow status while cases continue to decline. The number of positive cases has dropped by six since last week. The quarantine number has also decreased by 29 students. This number may fluctuate due to contact tracing. 32 students currently remain in isolation, including those who elect to stay in university-sponsored isolation housing. The COVID-19 task force reminds all students, faculty, and staff to wear a mask, wash your hands often, and maintain social distancing while on campus. With less than two months left in the semester, the first-year students are almost through their first year on campus. Tyler Garnett went around campus to see how their experience has gone so far. One of the biggest moments and hardest moments in the life of a teenager is the transition from high school to college. 
That's only gotten harder this year with the COVID-19 pandemic going on. I went around campus asking first year students how their experience has gone so far and how they've made the most of it. On a scale of one to five, uh, with one being the worst, how would you rank your college experience so far? Uh, probably like a four. Four. I'd say like a four. Probably out a four so far. Maybe about a three. I would rate it a four. Probably a three. Um, I'd probably rank it a three. How come? Um, because even though like there's COVID and stuff, I've still like gotten like close with people and joining a sorority definitely made my experience a lot better. Um, part of the part of the reason was uh, joining a fraternity. Really. Uh, Made me meet new people, have a great time, new experiences. Really got me out of my shell of just being in my room due to COVID and all that, so. Uh, because COVID restrictions make life really hard and being a commuter, they make it even harder. And you're kind of the forgotten child, like the middle child of the school. Living in Bixler, I mean, it's communal living, but like with COVID, like you don't really have a chance to interact with other people on campus. But living in Bixler, I've been given an opportunity to interact with a lot of people. So it helped me kind of grow and meet people on campus this like the past two semesters. Just living on a college dorm, like the college experience of living in a dorm is just awesome. So it's something I've never done before. It's been good going to classes and meeting new people, but I haven't been able to get out as much just because of COVID. A lot of events have been canceled and, uh, but I I'm hoping next year that uh, things will pick up a little bit. After interviewing all the first year students here on campus, it seems like everyone is making the most of this situation. With the COVID-19 pandemic, there's only so much you can do, but it seems like they're still having a pretty good time. That's all for me. I'm Tyler Garnett. It's time for entertainment. Emily McDonough is back with the latest news in pop culture. What's new this week, Emily? Thanks, Alex. On Tuesday, Disney announced new dates for eight movies and how they will be released. Both Cruella and Black Widow were released in theaters and on Disney Plus through Premiere Access. Cruella will release on May 28th and Black Widow on July 9th. Pixar's Luca will premiere on Disney Plus on June 18th. Movies fully going to theaters are Free Guy on August 13th, Shang-Chi on September 3rd, The Kingsman December 22nd, Deep Water January 14th, 2022, and Death on the Nile February 11th, 2022. This decision is Disney's attempt to gauge when and how the U.S. and other major film markets will bounce back from the pandemic. Warner Brothers recently made a new deal with Cineworld, the owners of Regal Cinemas, for theatrical releases. Starting in 2022, Warner Bros. Theatrical Films will have a 45-day window of theatrical exclusivity at Regal Cinemas. As of right now, Warner Bros. is releasing their movies in theaters and on HBO Max same day with no extra cost. In an article from Business Insider, an anonymous accuser alleged YouTuber Dom Z, a former member of social media star David Dobrik's vlog squad, had sexually assaulted her when she came to the group's home to film a video in 2018. At the time, the accuser was a minor and claimed that other Vlog Squad members gave her and her friends hard liquor, despite being under the legal age at the time. After hearing about the allegations, Dobrik spoke on the alleged incident, saying, I was completely disconnected from the fact that when people were invited to film videos with us, especially videos that relied on shock for views or whatever it was, that I was creating an unfair power dynamic. I did not know this before. Not only has Dobrik been dropped from several brand partnerships, including DoorDash, Dollar Shave Club, and EA Sports, he has also since stepped down from the board of Dispo, a photo app he co-founded after news that its Boston-based investor, Spark Capital, had distanced itself from the venture. I'm Emily, and that's entertainment. Thanks, Emily. The deadline has come and gone. Now's the time to plan your next step for room selection. The Office of Residential Life is offering room selection process information sessions to review the process of selecting a housing assignment with your roommates for the following academic year. The last information session is on Tuesday, April 6th. Since in-person hall tours are unavailable this year, check out the 360 virtual tours and hall tour videos on MyCharger. Don't forget to confirm your class status and eligibility for room selection. As spring semester comes to an end, students are preparing for the fall semester. And for residential students, housing selections is the first step. Here is Kelly Adkins with more. With fall 2021 housing deposits due last Friday, students now shift to focusing on where they would like to live for the next academic year. The freshman class will be completing this process for the first time ever. However, the Office of Residential Life has a list of comprehensive resources to make this process as stress-free as possible. As of March 23rd, students could begin selecting their roommates. Rising sophomores may only form roommate groups with other rising sophomores. 
rising sophomores are classified as a student who is currently completing their first year in university housing and enrolled in fall 2020. For those looking for roommates, there is one last roommate finder event on Tuesday, April 6th at 5.30 p.m. via Zoom. Just to talk to people um, because it's great for you to come to the roommate finder event, but if you don't talk to anyone at roommate finder, then you're not going to find a roommate. <laughs> on April 5th, students will receive a room selection number via email. These numbers are auto-generated and based on the rising class status. When it comes to selecting specific residential spaces, sophomore-only housing options include Westside Hall, which holds four students, Winchester and Sheffield Hall, which holds three to six, Dunham Hall, which holds four to five, and the Forest Hills Apartments, which holds three to five. Mallon said the biggest mistake students can make is putting down their deposit without selecting their housing on the designated day. The best way to avoid this is to mark your calendars for your selection day and time. Suite apartment selection for complete roommate groups will be on April 12th and 13th, bedroom selection for immediate roommate groups on April 14th, and individual bed selection for those without roommate groups on April 15th. Students are also encouraged to email roomselection at newhaven.edu if they're looking for a fast response. You know, we have a limited capacity, but students can still come by and we can answer their questions in person um, or over the phone. Kelly Adkins, Charger Bulletin News. Fall registration is right around the corner. If you haven't already, don't forget to meet with your academic advisor to receive your registration pin. Also, make sure to confirm your class level to determine your registration date. Seniors, special populations, and juniors register the week of April 5th. Students are part of a special population if their registration pin begins with a 1. Sophomores and first years will register on April 13th and 15th. Registration for graduate students will take place on Monday, March 29th. Don't forget to review your degree audit and check your account for holds throughout my charger. Let's check in on sports with Joe. What's new in Charger Sports? Thanks, Alex. Sunday was a busy day up on North with baseball, tennis, and softball all playing at the same time. Softball hosted the Hawks of St. Anselm's, looking to move to 4-0 on the season. The Hawks and ace Morgan Perry spoiled that opportunity when Perry no-hit the Chargers in Game 1, leading to a T Hawks 2-0 win over the Chargers. Game two was a completely different story when the Chargers jumped out to a 2-0 lead in the first and would add another in the second. That would prove to be all starting pitcher Ava Fitzmorris needed as she would pitch a complete game shutout winning the game 3-0. The Chargers defense helped Fitzmorris out turning five double plays in the game. The Chargers return to action tomorrow when they host Malloy with first pitch at 2 p.m. After their match against Bentley was postponed, the Chargers picked up a match against Big East opponent Providence Friars. After being down 3-1 after the first four matches, the Chargers would go on to win the next three to take the match against the Division I opponent. The Chargers take to the court tomorrow to face off against Stonehill at 3 p.m. Baseball stepped foot onto Frank Vieira Field for the first time in 689 days to host Pace University. The games were all Pace, sweeping the Chargers in the doubleheader, winning 9-3 and then 7-3. The Chargers return to action looking for their first win of the season when they host Lemoyne on Saturday with first pitch coming at 12 p.m. Lacrosse hosts hosted the fourth-ranked Dolphins of Lemoyne on Saturday. Chargers held their own in the first half, but the Dolphins pulled away in the second half, winning the game 13-6. Cypress Levitt and Emily Holland each netted a pair of in the game for the Chargers. The Chargers return to action tomorrow night when they host Bentley. This is the first time these two teams have faced off against each other since 2019, when Bentley spoiled the Chargers' senior night, winning 14-13. Game start will be at 3 p.m. at Kathy Zolad Stadium. That's all for sports this week. Back to you, Kayla and Alex. Is there a woman in your life who you think deserves more appreciation? The Women's History Month, show them your gratitude by nominating them for Spring 2021 Phenomenal Women. Nominate any woman that you feel has gone above and beyond in some way throughout their life and their time here on campus. This person can be a student, faculty, or staff member of the university. Feel free to nominate as many women you feel deserve this award. The form is available on Charger Connection and will close on March 25th at 11.59 p.m. Nominees will be announced at USGA's Breaking the Glass Ceiling event on March 31st. There's been talk on campus about a gazebo going up near the German Club. We're curious to know its use. Here's Kelly Nelson with more. Just as spring is rolling around, the university is making changes to its campus. The latest addition is the gazebo, which is right across from where the old house used to be. When we reconfigured the road, um, I had the road redesigned in that little circular walk area where the gazebo sits now. 
I actually had it designed with, with in anticipation that someday we would place a gazebo in that location. Plain and simple, it's 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 student space. It's it's space out, outside space for students to enjoy. Nothing would make me more pleased than to see students taking advantage of that space out there. With this new addition on campus, there'll be more space for Chargers to hang out. For Charger Bulletin News, this has been Kelly Nelson. Do you have a summer internship but can't afford housing? Then apply to the Bergami Summer Internship Program. The Career Development Center announced that the program is currently accepting applications through March 30th. The Bergami Family Summer Internship Program provides funding to offset the cost of living and other related expenses for an unpaid summer internship in any field. Eight stipends of $3,750 are available. To apply for the program, you must complete an unpaid internship over the summer months. You must be currently enrolled, undergraduate student, and returning for the fall semester. And you must submit a full application by 4 p.m. on March 30th. This program is supported by the Dean of Students Office and funded by the Bergami family. Check out your student email for the link to apply. The University of New Haven and the Charger Pride Committee worked together to create a one night only Broadway special for our campus community. With performances, Broadway stars and Q&A's, the special was one to remember. Kaylee Feschler has more on the planning process and the importance of this event. The Charger Pride Committee has spent countless hours into planning one special night for our campus community. And that is the one night only Broadway special, which first aired on Friday, March 19th, 2021. The special included appearances from well-known Broadway stars and performances. God on the high. Keep coming. One out, one in. They keep coming. If I have to beg and plead for your sympathy, I don't mind because you mean that much to me. And it was even hosted by the university's own Steve Marchiallo, who took the lead on planning the event. Uh, obviously with the pandemic and everyone being uh, remote and virtual, and we really want to um, create that sense of community. Um, and I know that can be a challenge um, with everyone being virtual and remote, so. The graphics, songs, performances, and more. It all added to the overall production of the show, which took countless of hours in planning. Just the process uh, was just kind of working with a production company that uh, uh, we work with in the Office of Graduate Student Services um, to try to identify some potential talent that could kind of fit within our budget um, that we can kind of put together um, for that evening. So we did have some choices uh, that the committee was able to review. With Broadway being lights out for over a year now, there was a special reason why it is important to bring an event like this to our campus. I know the Broadway actors that I spoke with are so excited to kind of get back. I think everyone's ready for that sense of normalcy, to kind of get back to that, that normal routine, whatever that might look like. With Broadway being lights out for over a year now, the university has spent countless hours creating opportunities like this for our students. Whether it's Broadway or our own Bucknell Theater, we hope that productions get underway soon. Kaylee Feschler, Charger Bulletin News. March 31st is our next Recharge Day. Hang out with friends or attend the many events scheduled for this day. At 9 a.m., hang out with the university's police department to enjoy coffee and donuts. At 12 p.m., hand over to the, the Quad Palooza in the Bixler Gerber Quad. There will be lawn games, music, grab-and-go snacks, and DIY craft items available throughout the event. Don't forget to stop by the button table to get your free button for International Transgender Day of Visibility. And at 7.30, join a dance party through the decades. Enjoy live music and dance to music from the 1960s to the present. Join the party virtually at throwbacktimemachine.com slash newhaven. These are only some of the events you can attend on Recharge Day. Check out Charger Connection for the full roster and more information. Well, that's all the time we have for today. You can check out the latest edition of the Charger Bulletin newspaper on chargerbulletin.com. Stay up to date by following us on social media at Charger Bulletin. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Kayla Mutchler. And I'm Alex Severo. We'll see you next time on the Charger Bulletin News.